all over the market, you'll see lots of different species, but you'll only see one stall actually selling the Ayungen. And this is really unique, so I'm excited to try it. Fishing is a major source of livelihood in the Philippines. We tend to look out into the sea for these, but we forget that we have a few large inland bodies of water as well. Laguna de Bay is the biggest one and faces lots of ecological problems. Not far away, the city of San Pablo has seven smaller lakes, San Paloc, Bunot, Mojicap, Palakpakin, Calibato, Yambo, and Bandin. All of them worth exploring. The best way to know more about a place has always been through its food. So of course we were curious to know what unique seafood we could find at the town's local public market and what the catch of the day can tell us about the local environment. We are currently in San Pablo, Laguna. It's always a good thing to be outside of Manila and I can't wait for this video and the stories that we'll cover because it's the type of story where I'm discovering things as we go with you, uh, which is the best for me because I get to try new things and taste new flavors. We're currently heading to the market to check out different types of seafood that they're selling there um, so that we can dig a little deeper into the heritage of the city, into the heritage of this province, and the unique seafood that peppers their dishes. So this here is the palapakin shrimp. is probably a, a very kind of rare find. They were mentioning that they were one of the only ones to actually sell in the market. And this is actually one of the dishes that we'll be featuring today. What we do see going around the wet market is that there's a lot of tilapia, there's a lot of bangos, there's a lot of farmed fish going around. And that's kind of replacing the native, more endemic species um, that really kind of build the cultural heritage of Laguna and the dishes that we want to feature. Um, so today it's kind of like surprising and shocking to kind of navigate the market and see mostly farmed fish knowing that the lakes here were rich so long ago with so many endemic species. I'm actually really happy to find this here. This is a Ayungen, uh, which is one of the species we were looking for. Endemic to here, uh, been kind of replaced with more commercial fish farming tilapia. Um, so it's very rare to kind of see here. All over the market, you'll see lots of different species, but you'll only see one stall actually selling the Ayungen. And this is really unique, so I'm excited to try it. During the research for these Laguna videos, one of the things that I really wanted to try was Bia. And apparently it's extremely difficult to find fresh because it's something that's not farmed and that's fished wild, which is basically a line and hook. In which case, you don't necessarily get the amounts needed to go to market and actually sell it for a profit. So what a lot of people do is they end up just drying it and then selling it in bulk once that drying process is finished, which makes a lot of sense. Um, but it is still very rare and I'm excited to try it because First of all, when I looked at dried food in general or dried fish, I have no idea how each of them should be prepared and each should be eaten, and they're all very different in that sense. So the bia looks really promising, um, and I think this just fried with the women that we're about to meet is gonna be so good. So I think we're done with our market. This is such a great introduction as to what we can expect. Now let's actually go taste some food. From the market, we headed straight to Lake Pandin, where we heard of a group of women staunchly protecting its environment. Before ecotourism started at Lake Pandin, the community around it relied on fishing until they noticed that the fish just weren't growing anymore. Pandin is considered to be oligotrophic, or has low amounts of dissolved nutrients and organic matter that are necessary for these fish to thrive. Sir, yung nagturo sa amin dito para nga magsimula kami sa ecotourism ay si Sir uh, Mandy Marinho. Na siya yung nagdadala ng mga bisita, una, dalawa, tatlo, hanggang sa pagbalik mayroon na ulit na iba. Hanggang sa kami po ay eh, nakabuo ng marami at awa na Diyos, may mga nagdo-donate pa po. 
Ayun, tapos ayun sir, awan lang sa'yo kung hanggang sa ngayon, hanggang sa nakilala na kami. Dumami na po ng dumami. When the lake was open to tourists, the women would paddle rafts for sightseeing visitors and cook freshwater seafood and other Lagunense dishes. Nanay Marlin was among its first women paddlers. Naggawa po kami ng balsa na hindi na datig-datig lang namin. Bakit hindi namin magawa kami ng datatanggap ng bisita ng mga turista? Po, mga babae kami nag-aano, nag Papadel, ginagawa naman ng mga lalaki, hinahatid kami doon sa lampas sa gitna. Tapos kami na ang nagpapadel. Pag uwi dito, kaya na namin ang magpapadel kasi yung alon papunta na dito. Yung po kami ginagawang bayanihan, katulong po lahat ng membro, lahat ng mga mangisda para ma-maintain namin yung kalinisan. Ipinagbabawal din po namin ang pagpuputol ng mga puno sa paligid ng lawa. Hindi talaga pwedeng putulin kasi pag pinutol, makakalbo yung ano, pangit na po. Tingnan. The dry pendants, freshly made dried bia, as well as the one I bought from the market, I met Nanay Lina a paddler and one of the head cooks here. Lalagay po muna yung asin, tapos saka natin iano sa may tubig na asin para hindi buo-buo yung asin. Kasi pagka yung buo-buo yung asin, naka, nawawala yung ano, yung, hindi ma, hindi ma, nagkakaroon ng lasa yung asida kasi malalaglag lang. Ibilad po muna natin. Oops! Dito po natin ilalagay sa mainit para mabilis at matuyo. Alright, so here we have the dried bia being fried. Can I try one? I mean, obviously, primary flavor always with salted fish is the salt. But then you just have underlying flavors there that kind of tell you, okay, maybe this could be good as a broth as well, or served with rice, or maybe served with something else. The level of saltiness is just perfect. Like I can really see this being added to tons of different foods or eaten with tons of different ingredients and condiments. They have a lot of pickles in Laguna as well. Fermented kind of like burros and fermented like relishes. This would go perfect kind of with that. The one we saw at the market was like really flat, really dry. So I'm sure that one will crisp up really fast. These ones are kind of like between a fresh fish and a dried fish. Pwede yung dalawang, the two ways, no? Very good. May pasalubong ako. Ito nagbili ko sa market. Yung ganito. Ah. So I'm actually really interested to see the, the difference in flavor here from something that's kind of like mid-dry to something that's very dry. Mas mabilis to, no? Nagluto. So this is gonna cook much faster. Okay, let's try it. Not as salty, because it has more time. Tastes like fish chicharron. It's a very lean fish. Not a lot of meat on it. Very dry, very crispy. So good. Like, this is something I could eat in the morning without shocking my palate. The other small fish we saw in the market, Ayungin, isn't always easy to find. But when it's available, one of the best ways to eat it is in Pinayes na Ayungin. So we went to meet Chef Day and Jel Salonga and Chef Dino Datu, who have been preserving heirloom Lagunense recipes in their restaurant Aurora Filipino Cuisine in Santa Cruz, Laguna. So Aurora Filipino Cuisine is our ancestral house. Uh, it's called Aurora. It was named after our Lola, um, Aurora. We serve Filipino, um, Laguna, and Quezon inspired dishes. Yung early days namin when we opened, talagang walang kumakain na, ano, na mga bata. So mostly puro senior. It's important to teach kasi the young generations um, our culture. When we make food, when we create food, when we share food, nare-relive yung culture, culture whether it be family unit, or whether it be as a town, or whether it be as a province. So 
So yung next natin na dish is uh, pinais na ayungin. First, papakita ko sa inyo yung ayungin na uh, nabibili at nahuhuli dito sa Laguna de May. So, normal size niya is mga ganito. Dito sa Santa Cruz, pag sinabing pinais, parang automatic pack siyo siya. Traditionally, dahon ng saging binabalot yung ayungin. But, uh, because of our family's Quezon uh, roots then so aside from Laguna, our mom's side is from Quezon. Uh, sila naman, ang pinapangbalot nila ay edible leaf, which is called uh, kulis. Ano siya? Parang lumalambot din siya. Para siyang pechay, para siyang uh, taro. Na pag niluto mo, lalambot siya. And yun, mala, ano, pwede na siya kainin. So, papatong natin dun sa kulis leaf yung ayungin. And then add sliced ginger. And then roll. So, yan. Para siyang lumpia. So, isistock mo lang siya dyan. Sa loob ng palayok, ilalagay na lang dun yung lahat ng um, aromatics and seasoning. So, bawang, sibuyas, luya, whole peppercorn, kamatis. Whole lang din na ripe tomatoes. Yung suka na ginagamit natin ay coconut vinegar pa rin. Kasi yan yung uh, product dito sa Laguna dahil maraming buko, maraming tuba. Add konting water. So, papatungan ko lang siya ng banana leaf. I'm going to quickly interrupt this future video to thank the sponsors of this video. This video was brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes that really cater to people who just want to continuously learn, continuously get better, and just be inspired by other people and develop themselves. The best thing you can do is invest in yourself and in your personal growth. Now, whether you're someone that's into photography, videography like I am, or even illustrations and graphics or VFX, Skillshare really is the place for you. I've been taking a class called Find Your Style by Andy J. Pizza. Now, he's an illustrator, which has nothing to do with what I do, but I really like how he breaks down the creative process and really teaches you how to find your own voice in a creative field. In a world where everything is content, it's easy to fall into the trap of just doing what everyone else is doing because it seems to be working for people. But at the end of the day, it's really more fulfilling when you find your own voice and you find your own style of doing things. And at the end of this class, you'll really be able to kind of identify who you are as a creative and apply that in whatever field you're in. The first 1,000 people who click the link in the description box below or use my code Erwin Yusuf will get a one month free trial of Skillshare and you'll really be able to have access to everything on the platform. So make sure you click that link right now. Okay, back to our fish. <music> After all that fish, I was excited to try the pina ete, a dish made of ground freshwater shrimps cooked with coconut cream. Sometimes the women sell pina ete in bottles for additional income. Sir, yung aming hipon, eh, dati-dati kasi ginata ang hipon. Yun yung kasama namin sa menu ng aning mga turista. Ngayon, siyempre, nakikita nila lagi nilang ginataan. So sabi natin, mag-isip naman tayo na kung ano mang ibang recipe naman na dyan din, dyan din sa, sa lawa mang gagaling. Binayo naman na may sili, may kaunting mga palabok na palaro, pa, palahok para kung sa ganun. Iba naman po yung matatawag na ano. At least hipon pa rin, pero iba naman yung recipe. Kundi pinaiti naman. Mga bandang alas 4 pa po o alas 5, pinapandaw na po yung hipon. Ang ating pong recipe na gagawin ngayon ay yung pong uh, pinaiti o tinatawag po na binayong hipon. Dapat po kasi yun iano natin sa blender pero sa ngayon po wala po kasi tayong kuryente so kailangan nating magmanuman. Uh, una po sinangag namin yung hipon tapos po ito po ay kailangan nating tatare ng pinong-pino. Kailangan po siya imapino para pagluluto mamaya sa gata hindi siya buo-buo. Okay po natin yan. Yan po, ito po'y pakukuluan natin hanggang sa siya ay maiga. Maglangis-langis na po yan. This is what I've been excited about. 
I love the separation of the oil that's happening here so you know it's really rendered down properly. With some rice, kind of like a perfect bite. It's super briny, but not like incredibly salty. If I were to compare it to something, it would probably be baguong like in texture, but not in terms of the intensity of the salt. But this is something that's definitely very unique and very different from anything I've ever tasted. So you really have that shrimp coming out, the gata. You really taste that. And just with perfectly cooked rice and in this kind of environment, it's hard to beat. So we still have some biat from a while ago. This is the really dried one. I'll try it with rice this time. It's like a fish bacon. So crispy, nice and salty. Since it's mostly skin, it retains that crunch. It's been sitting there for a while, but it's really nice. And I mean, the food becomes so much more important and interesting as you kind of build context around it. And this is why we do shows like today. It's really to show importance, not only in terms of preserving these very Filipino dishes that aren't necessarily widely known, but also showcasing the stories behind it, the people behind it, and kind of like that struggle that happens in terms of making sure the next generations not only have great food to eat, but a really nice pristine environment to eat it in. Food for thought, just for you. I'm gonna finish my pinay there. A day will truly never be enough to get to know Laguna, but I was glad to have tried the unique seafood it still has to offer. And as some of these dishes are slowly becoming rarer these days, we are reminded of two things. One, to find more ways of fishing sustainably, and two, to preserve these traditional delicacies before it's too late. So the next time you're up for a road trip south of Manila, instead of heading to Cavite or Tagaytay, try Laguna for something different.